This is Big Business with Sarah. This podcast guides you to finding what you desire most in life and business. Because running a business is very much about your personal development. In this podcast, I'm sharing what my clients ask me and how I help them. Thanks for joining. Welcome back to another episode of Big Business with Sarah. And, you know, where we dive every week, we dive deep into the world of running a business, uh, how I'm coaching my clients and how your uh, how you can improve your personal development. Because obviously when you're an entrepreneur, you're listening to this, you know that every day there is a new challenge coming your way. And what I love about entrepreneurship is that uh, because of that challenge, you develop yourself. So it's always good <laughs> to have a challenge. Today we have an interesting topic or challenge to discuss one that many of us can relate to, dealing with negative feedback. In this episode, we'll explore how one of my clients handled a challenging situation and the valuable lessons we can learn from her experience. Let's jump right in. So today I wanted to share a story about one of my clients, whom I'll refer to as Eva. And Eva recently conducted a masterclass for her clients. And unfortunately, she received some negative feedback from one participant. And it was disheartening for her. But she re reached out to me, as a great coach she does, for guidance on how to handle the situation and what she could learn from it. So The thing was, she did the masterclass and she asked for feedback. She wasn't very happy about the masterclass, but anyway, she, uh, she asked for feedback anyway. And um, the first thing I told Eva was that she doesn't always have to seek feedback immediately after starting something new. This was a new program. And I told her, uh, and I mean that, it is commendable that she wanted to know how she did right? It's always good. You know, you always want to test, um, you know, ask for feedback and then build on and make it better, right? So in a way it's very good, but sometimes it's beneficial to give yourself the opportunity to try things before seeking validation or critique. And we also need to trust our own judgment and instincts. So for today, I've prepared three tips that I shared with her that I'm going to share with you now as well uh, that can help you once this happens, right? So maybe you want to save this episode for later. Once it happens, maybe again, uh, what you can do. So the first tip is trust your instincts and take action. And um, so as entrepreneurs, coaches, professionals, we often have a tendency to seek validation and feedback actually before we even begin. But sometimes it's better to jump in, do the work and learn from the experience. So by taking action first, we give ourselves a chance to learn, grow and gain valuable insight that, that will help us improve. Um, If I would have, so looking at my own business, if I would have told people that I was going to become a business coach and let the, you know, the decision be based on everybody's response, then there would be no big business with Sarah. <laughs> there wouldn't be a hundred clients who have done, you know, followed my method and have a very profitable business right now because... I didn't know yet also what my um, my method was going to be. I mean, I had an idea, obviously, but I, you know, I didn't have the chance to to say it um, to all those people that I would have uh, asked validation to. And sometimes you just have to go through things, you know, for instance, you know, the same thing what I'm saying Uh, what I'm sharing with you quite often is that if I'm listening to one of my first episodes or when I'm seeing, you know, downloads of episodes five, episode five or something, I'm like, no, don't listen to that. Listen to the latest one because that's the best, right? You're always growing. And, you know, that's also, sp yeah, that's specifically in my case, but I mean, everybody, everybody has that. So, yeah, 
I'm sharing this example with with you and also with her to show uh, that you really don't need to ask feedback the whole time, you know, the whole every step of the way. Um, it is okay to sometimes just do something, see what happens, try it again, and maybe after four tries, then ask for feedback. So moving on to tip number two, um, I asked Eva to reflect on whether the critical I mean, let's call them a cr critical client, aligns with her ideal client profile. And this question helps us assess whether the feedback we receive is truly valuable and relevant to our goals. So um, it is really essential to consider whether the person providing feedback is your target audience, um, you know, and target audience are the people that you really genuinely want to serve. And not all feedback is created equal. And if the feed person giving the feedback isn't your ideal client, their perspective might not align with your goals or the needs of your target audience. So also your other clients. And, you know, if and and this is something human, right? So you you know that you get 10 compliments for something. Maybe you did a presentation at work and then someone says, yeah, but you talk too fast. And then the only thing that you're thinking about is, oh, yeah, I t yeah, but it was good, but I talked too fast. And that's, you know, that's a sentence, a sentence that's, you know, going to lead its own life and, um, uh, and, and, <laughs> and you know, and uh, at some point you will give presentations <laughs> in this <laughs> in this peat because you're afraid that somebody will tell you you talk too fast <laughs> so you always kind of focus i don't know why this is i mean yes i mean there is obviously there's a lot of brain research and neurological research going on and we we are figuring out why this is but maybe um yeah maybe it's also um Maybe it's also because we always want to approve, improve, right? And I, I'm certainly the case that I, I certainly believe that it's the case of Eva, my client, who, whose name is actually different. But um, yeah, so by evaluating, evaluating the source of the feedback, you can filter out options that may not be as valuable or relevant. So imagine, imagine um, this person is not her ideal client, right? So this person is not Eva's ideal client, but she listens to this person, right? She is, um, she's going to do things to, uh, to make this client happy. What happens is that all the energy that she's putting into someone that isn't her ideal client is going to waste. And she cannot spend that energy on her actual ideal client. And those were the other people who followed the masterclass, didn't say anything, or at least were very positive about it. So, also, and you know, when you're running your business alone, or maybe you have a team of freelancers or a small team, but you are the leader, do not let that negative um, feedback, you know, get get you get get you get in the way of what you want. And then, lastly, I uh, and, you know, the third tip is that um, I discuss the importance of turning negative feedback into an opportunity for growth because it always is so you know maybe this person um is actually your ideal client criticism can be challenging to hear but reframing it as a chance to learn and improve can really shift our mindset and help us make the most of the situation and then this particular case of the client she knows this already um, but it is actually to embrace negative feel feedback and seeing it as a growth growth opportunity uh, is really also changing your feeling uh, feelings about this. So, ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? How can I refine my approach or enhance my skills? So, when we embrace feedback as an opportunity to evolve, we can really transform setbacks into stepping stones towards success. You've heard me say it before, um, but. Another client of mine had um, had a little setback in in their business, and um, I suggested to read "The Obstacle Is the Way" by Ryan Holiday. Those are all small, short stories, little history lessons, actually, of uh, you know how one event has really changed uh, the history, you know, written 
um, you know, from a certain perspective, of course, but how it has really changed history. And his theory is, and I, I actually agree, that the obstacle is the way. So sometimes when there's, you know, for instance, so this person who is not the ideal client, what what could happen in her business? I'm not saying that it is because we didn't discuss this yet. But, you know, what could happen is um, she's going to be doing very, better, better screening for her clients, obviously. Um, maybe she wants to create something for this person, you know, that doesn't involve her life coaching, but maybe she wants to do some audio recordings and coach them through that way. Um, what else can she do? Uh, because, uh, you know, she's uh, a coach masterclass uh, in, in the masterclass. So what else can she do? Let me think. Um, so how can you, uh, so um, maybe also really focus on, you know, uh, okay, this person said that, but what did the other person say, right? So if, if there is a little bit of a negative there, then really seek for the positive and also train yourself in this. So Every time, for instance, if you're in, if you're doing sales, every time that you're receiving a um, a no, uh, see it as something positive. So, for instance, if um, if this person, for instance, it this isn't the case, but if this person, after the negative feedback, decides and says, you know what, I actually don't want to work with you anymore, imagine. Um, to how many people uh, you can open the door now because the negativity is gone, the spot is gone and, you know, what can you, I mean, what opportunity does this bring? So, and by actually kind of training yourself to think positively in this and, you know, some people call it affirmations, um, yeah, some people call it visualization, um, all these different techniques uh, do actually influence the way that you're running your business. And, you know, at first I, I didn't really believe in, in all of that, but more and more I do. And so there you have it. Three valuable tips for handling negative feedback based on my coaching ses session with Eva. Remember, it's important to trust your instincts and take action. Acce assess the relevance of feedback from your ideal client and embrace criticism as a growth opportunity. And really, in our journey of personal and professional development, encountering negative feedback is inevitable right? It will happen. However, by adopting the right mindset and impl implementing these strategies, we can ne navigate these challenges with resilience and come out stronger on the other side. And now it's time for one of your questions. So Yesterday, I posted something on my Instagram stories about how I want to help artistic businesses this summer. And I got an, um, a DM and I, I told people, you know what, drop your email address right here in the, in the sticker and then I will add you and then I will let you know at what time and, and date and everything it is. Because I don't know yet, because I just got back from holiday. Um, I was actually, by the way, very, um, uh, I was having the flu when I was recording last week. I don't know, maybe you heard it, but uh, yeah, I was actually uh, working and I thought I had a jet lag, but actually I was pretty sick <laughs> and I, I, I just got back better on Tuesday. So, um, so flu, what did I want to say? Yes. Okay. So, I, so I, I'm just, I'm just back, you know, I, I'm just, just back. So I still have to figure out what, what date is going to be anyway. So I'm going to host a free masterclass about how to run a profitable artistic business. If you want to know more about that, I will probably I, I will put a link in the description so you can also subscribe to the to the list. Anyway, um, so I got a, a message um, say someone asked someone telling me they didn't really want to have the artistic business masterclass, uh, but they said, yeah, actually, I want to do I, I want to create a, a business in fashion styling and really nice, really nice angle. She told me everything about it. And um, and she doesn't really know at what point she should hire me. So that's the, that's the question. At what point do I hire a business coach? And I really like this question because um what quite often happens is, uh, so I think there's kind of three moments, right? So uh, the first moment is uh, at the beginning, right? So if you're just deciding, you know what, um, 
I really want to start my my own business. Um, uh, I, I'm not really sure what I want yet. Um, I want to figure this out. So this could actually take a while. So and then the second uh, second time is you know in the middle, and that is most most of the time when it's not really going very well, or if the planning isn't going, you know, if the things aren't going as planned. And then the third moment uh, that people uh, would hire me is right before launch. So. Um, you know, right before everything is going to get started. And then they want to ask me, you know, Sarah, how do, how, how do I approach this? And so in this, there's, there's everything to say about these three phases. Um, so my advice would be, you know, as a business coach, but also, you know, as a coachee, obviously I, I also work with business coaches myself, you know, so as to learn from them is, um, I think, you know, right in the beginning, it would be, um, depending on how much time you have, right? So if you don't have a lot of time, I would start immediately with a coach. So, um, and, you know, if you don't have time, you might have money uh, or not, but then maybe think about another way to to get get some money because it's very difficult to build up your business and to really, you know, you know, get, get rich quick, which I don't believe in, obviously. Um, but um, so... Maybe if you if you have some time, uh, start with buying different online courses. So you know if there's something about marketing, if there's something about sales, if there's something about building your brand, I don't know, you know, or or creating your program, um, just buy a few courses. See who you who you like, who you like to work with. That or if you're in a hurry, hire uh, a coach to for private coaching. Then in the in in the you know in the second kind of timing you know in the middle if it's not going well um yeah you you can you can do that right you can always wait for you can always try i i i'm i don't really necessarily say that you have to um have to hire someone right at the beginning right so i spoke a few weeks ago i spoke to someone who was uh, just starting her business and, um, yeah, you know, I really, I, I told her that I really am admired it, that she was saying, okay, you know what, I need a coach. So the same thing, if I would go back to gymnastics, for instance, which is not going to happen anymore, but if I would, I would probably need to have a coach, right? I'm not going to do this all by myself or personal training or when in the fitness, in fitness, um, I do recommend people getting a personal trainer because if I'm looking at the fitness you know that I I have a sports education uh if I'm looking at the fitness sometimes I'm like oh oh my gosh I hope you're not uh getting injured um because the way that you're doing this is very dangerous (laughs) so you know that's a very good idea so we have this idea of sports yes then you need a coach or you know in, in mental health yes you need a therapy a therapist but in business what so much of your life depends on, e- e- e.g. your income, uh, we don't really think that we need a coach. Um, but why shouldn't you? You know, if there's someone who understands business, who has worked with many businesses and doesn't just have your experience, but also the experience of so many others, why not? So, yes, you can figure it out yourself. You know, yes, do it, play around, see what works. And then if uh, if you want it to go another direction, then hire a coach. Um, the third time, right before the launch, um, then it's probably already too late. So a coach can really help you create your plans. Um, and I know that it's very counterintuitive to want to hire someone at the beginning, uh, but most of the time it's probably better. And I'm going to, um, to explain this a little bit with an example that I had, uh, when I was working in marketing and, um, in the, in the museum world. So when, I, I was running a uh, an events organization or actually a network organization for marketeers in arts and culture. And I would or- organize uh, events once a month. It was very nice and all, always with different different topics. Uh, you know, one time it would be about funnels, the other time it would be about memberships, you know, all these different ways on how to market the museum. And, you know, we're many, many members actually. And uh, one of the main problems that I heard uh, from the marketeers, uh, you know, from my members was, yes, so the curators are, you know, are thinking about an exhibition and you know they're creating it they're um you know trying to find you know the right uh, objects artworks 
you know, they're really creating it. And then right at the end, you know, when, when the exhibition is kind of finished and, and sketched out and, you know, the only thing that has to happen is the build up, then they ask the mar marketing team to, um, to, to sell it. And what they always, what the marketing team obviously always wanted, and this has changed, right? So this was about 10 years ago when I had this job. Um, uh, this has changed, but so it, it's much better if the marketeer is already involved also in the creation process of the exhibition. And, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a new approach, but, you know, the marketing will be better and the sales, you know, the people coming in will be better because a marketeer has also, ha also has a lot of ideas and, you know, the visitor experience doesn't stop, uh, doesn't begin or end there. Um, so yeah, that's maybe an uh, interesting way to, to look at it. So that's the same with your business coach. So if you are, you know, if you're kind of brewing up something and yeah, actually, you know, you're going to work with me or with someone else who is saying, yes, but actually this is not profitable and there's no way we can make this profitable, profitable, then it's going to be very difficult to run your business. So, um, that's my answer actually to, to this person saying, okay, you know what, this is a way, um, this is an, uh, an approach and, uh, you don't have to wait before it's perfect. Right. So, um, and you also don't have to be super prepared with all different kinds of questions, especially if you're work, going to work privately with someone. But um, yeah, to really, um, to really just see if this person can help you, if this coach can help you in the phase that you're in. And don't be afraid, you know, we won't bite you. And, um, uh, and, and do this for yourself and for your business and also for your future clients. Now I have a question for you. So my question for you today is about the first part of the episode. Um, I want you to think about the negative feedback that you've received uh, over the past half year and uh, how you framed this in, in your mind also and in your business. What have you done with it? Have you been, um, have you been dismissive of it? Do you think, well, you know what, this is not my ideal client, I don't care? Or um, were you maybe a little bit sad about it? Or yeah, how did you handle it? And, and maybe take some time to journal on this, how you handle the situation. And maybe it sounds a little bit negative, but actually I think there's really a positive to this. And so, yeah, I want to invite you to do that. And I wish you a very happy rest of your week. Thank you for listening to Big Business with Sarah. If you've enjoyed today's episode, leave a five-star review and hit subscribe. If you're ready for your next step in business, you can find out how to work with me in the show notes. Do not forget to submit your coaching question for one of my next episodes. Have a happy day.